So we're going to remove this bushing out of the chassis, as a previously shown we've got the tool. We're going to put the threaded rod with the pulling device there. We're going to slide the spacer there. Got this piece, put that on so. Then the thrust bearing. And then the nut. What we're going to do is pull this bush out. I'll give you, show you <coughs> what we've got. See that? Pull in there. A nice long wrench in case it's tight. You can see the puller disappearing into the chassis. It's a pretty good pull. But it, it's a coarse thread and going in fairly quick. So we pull the bushing out. I'll just show you the bushing, how well it came out. See the bushing is there. bushing on the tool, slide that into there, and then we're just going to slide our spacer there, bearing, and then wind the nut on, and we'll pull just using that piece for now till we're, till we're almost finished and we just need to centre the bushing. So as the bushing gets deeper into the hole, you're, it's going to come to a stop and still stick out at this point because the tool now is not going to allow the bushing to centralise. And what we're going to do is, um, now it's stopped and it's still sticking out there. So I have to use the spacer part of the tool to centralise the bush. So we're just going to take it in a little bit more to centralise it properly. You see at this point. You can see we've got an equidistant bush. So we're just going to use the spacer part of the bush to allow us to bring this area here so it's centralized in the chassis leg. Okay, tool junkies, this will be uh, fun. Uh, first of all, I'm going to replace the uh, bearings here, and this is part of the parking brake arrangement, but it actually mounts off of the back uh, differential, which we're working on. And you can see there's these uh, brass bushings in there, and I've got new bushings, so I'm going to replace them. Now the one on this end is quite easy to get out. It's recessed, so you can just take a hole punch, go down in there, tap it a little bit, and it'll come right out on you. Okay? So I've got that one out. Now on the other one, I'll take, I've got my uh, stamp-on bushing drivers, and I've picked an appropriate size there and put it on. I'll run that in there. And the other one, quite easy to tap out with that. And I'm going to change this bushing driver over here and put this one on to put them back in, the new ones back in with. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take those and I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to make sure I get started straight on. back 
Again, I would use a press on some of these things, but these are brass and they go in quite easily. So I'm going to put this one on the edge of the workbench. I'm going to get it started straight and I can actually hold it fairly straight with the punch going in. So we got both of those in, nice and snug and new. And this pin goes in there, and it does wear, but boy, that one, see, it's nice and snug. And you can tell the other ones were as loose as could be. Probably won't be able to put it back in, because sometimes you furl that edge driving them out. But uh, anyway, that's how you put your new bushings in there. Okay, a little trick I always use is uh, sometimes as I paint these, I get a little paint inside and stuff. So I'm going to run a wire brush in and out of those a little bit to uh, clean them up. And I find if you run it all the way through, back, all the way through and back a few times, you'll clean that up pretty good so the pins will fit right in. And sometimes when you have the pins CAD plated, it adds a little uh, thickness to the pins. But that one fits in and moves quite nicely. That one fits in and moves quite nicely. So I think we're good on the pins. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the arms a little bit. This goes up on the transmission, and you have uh, a specially bolt coming out of the center of the uh, uh, back. Well, they call it transmission. Us Americans call it a differential, but... You know, these things just snap in, and they're, uh, let's see, a BRC5085, I believe. And, you know, they look to be the same size as you use up on your steering linkage, but they're a different part number. I actually had some for a steering link linkage, and they're a different number, but they seem to measure out all the same. I don't know if they're a different material or what. But we've got that. And then I went ahead and popped the two in here, which are the same part number. There's a spacer in here, which you can see I went ahead and shoved the spacer in. And then that's going to set on that transmission just like that. I'll feed the bolt from the inside to the outside. You'll want the head towards the differential when this gets mounted on there. I'm going to put the washer on. As so, and I'll put my uh, nut on there. Okay, so that's how that's going to mount. And that's actually all going to set there like that. The brake rod from the front will come in here. The one to the right brake will be on this one. And the linkage to the left brake will be on that. And as this moves it pulls those tight. I guess it moves that direction as it's pulled forward and you can see it'll pull those rods. Okay. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get me a little SIG. Here, SIG 3000. Uh, Worth makes it. It's been in most of my videos. I use it for all kinds of stuff, but I'm going to pack it on in there and uh, Pack it on in those holes. Let me get a little more there. And uh, this is a synthetic grease, and it doesn't expand much, and it sticks real well. So uh, I'm going to put it all in there. And I'm going to put a little bit on my bearing surfaces there. And put a little on those bearing surfaces. And I'm also going to put a little on my O-ring there to hold that in place. I always put a little on the O-rings. It helps them uh, not get cut as you tighten down. And that's going to go on there like that. But it actually, I think the best way to do it is it sets around that bushing there. And so if you get it around that bushing, and then you shove it on down... It uh, pretty well seals that O-ring around that bushing. So there we go. Let me clean my hands up and get some of this goop off of there, and uh, we'll continue. Okay, the next step is I'm going to put this washer in the bottom, but this is a very specialty washer. Uh, 
it's a uh, 0.13 uh, thick and it's 0.727 in diameter so it's normally thicker than most of the other but I think it's a one of a kind so you got to get the right washer back in there or when you put your uh, castle nut on in your uh, pin in uh, it won't be tight enough so anyway uh, it's extra thick so then when this gets down and you can see the pinhole coming up here uh, it tightens down just right on that and makes a seal and that's nice and solid there where you want it so uh, we got to go get us a cotter pin and seal that on in Hey, uh, a couple things here. Uh, this is a cotter pin uh, out of my collection. It's a 1 16th of an inch. It's the same size at the top and the bottom. There will be a, uh, you know, cotter pin on both ends of this. Now, this is kind of like a wheel bearing. You can't tell you, there's no real good way to grab it. So, uh, you know, you tighten it down till it's nice and snug and has just a nice flow to it. Uh, then you put the cotter pin in and that keeps the nut from unscrewing. It's kind of like a front wheel bearing, except I'm not going to bend the cotter pin at a 90 degree angle. But uh, I am going to take and tap the end a little bit to make sure I can get that cap on there and it'll pass it. Uh, going on its way down. But I want to get those cotter pins bent over. As such, and then I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna nip them off there, get them out of the way of the cap, and then I'm gonna make sure that cap fits on there. By the way, there's plenty of grease in there, that cap's meant to retain grease under there. Uh, should do that with a brass hammer, but uh. You know what's going on, and so there you go. Okay, uh, so there we go, and uh, just a note, I got the O-ring, and uh, all the grommets came in from uh, uh, Albers out in Indiana, thanks to Greg, and uh, basically these bushings, which I bought extra ones, I usually buy a couple of extra about everything in case I screw something up, which I don't show you on tape if I do, but uh, anyway, these came from Barbo over in the Netherlands, and I kind of like them for hard-to-get parts. Uh, uh, they seem to have a lot of the unusual things, and uh, about half the price of a lot of the other people, and they're good quality, and they fit well. So anyway, just to have... This is Kyle removing the outer layers of plastic of the greased, re-arched springs uh, with new inserts. Notice the clamps uh, holding the springs together. Uh, they are spaced so that you can get the bottom clamp on when you start to put the gaiters on. You gotta get this lined up on the knob here on the top of the spring. Get your clamp on there. Make sure you got this part sticking up out of the top so when you put it on the frame, you're not gonna have it sticking up upwards into the top. Get it on there nice and tight. Then you can remove these clamps on the side to make room for the gaiters going on. Starting to lace up these gaiters, you wanna start towards the middle of the spring first on the bigger ends. Notice here on the end, there's two ways you can go in here. One's got the opening, one doesn't. You want to go through the side with the opening first and get this string tied on there. Alright, once you got the string tied on, Kind of get it fitted around here. Make sure you're lined up with these knuckles here. Get lined up. Make sure this little flap is underneath here. Get your pin. 
go through this back slot, up and out that first hole. Get the rope pulled through. Up here, and then just go and stitch along, just stitch along as you go. Put the needle in through one side of the hole, obviously come out the other. And then as you're pulling it through, make sure you get it nice and tight as you move along. It'll kind of hold itself in place. And just go from side to side. Once you get down to the end here, keep getting it tight all along. Tie it off here at the end. And then once you get it tied off, we put these straps on both ends and we're all done. The star of the show, go ahead. So today we're going to uh, show you how to get that tiny rubber hole over this large clevis on the brake rods. Um, you, you can imagine that uh, this is going to be a little bit difficult, but it's really not too bad. We put plenty of soapy uh, substance. It's, I was going to say soapy water, but there's a lot of soap in there. It's probably um, more soap than anything. And we're, we're going to spread that. I don't know if you can see that. We're spreading that pretty wide, and we, we stretch it out a bit. To do that, we use these uh, pliers. These are spring ring pliers, but the uh, nice thing about these pliers is they're very, very tiny there. I have another set with a hook on them, and that won't work. So we need to use the smallest tips with the strongest frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it, and we're going to try and put the rubber over both sides. Oops. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and pull this up over the both sides of that clevis. You can see I'm, oh dear, one second and I'll be with you. I'm going to have to tighten this down or get more of it in there to keep it tight. So, we're going to... Spread those jaws like that. And then we're going to push that rubber over there. And you can see that we've got that. The rubber is now over there and that's ready to mount on the car. Right, we're starting to put the rear differential back on. We've got three spacers here for this part we're putting back on. And we're putting the right spring on first. It's a little bit thicker than the left spring because the driver's side's over there, so it's rated for that. Just get these plates lined up here, bolts through. Go on like that, get your washer and your nut on there. And then you just gotta tighten it up. Alright, we got this one tightened on here, and uh, something I forgot to mention, putting those on. On these bolts, there's one side that's machined flat, other side's not. want to make sure you got the flat machined side going up against your washer. And then we're going to put the same thing on the left side. Alright, so getting ready to put the springs on here. Uh, the end bushings we had taken to a shop, got one piece over there, two piece over here. And uh, we got this tool here to help flatten the spring out. Um, it is pretty dangerous. There's a lot of tension on it. Uh, had this right underneath this little nub part here where it can kind of sit, sit there and it won't move on you. And there's a little piece of rubber underneath. Just cut it off of here just to protect the leather a little bit. Then our tool here, uh, the first time this was done, it was just this first flat piece and it was bending a little bit. So had another piece of metal uh, on here to reinforce it. There was also only one nut on here and um, it was it just didn't work out that well so we had two nuts soldered on there made it a little more stable and uh, when you crank it down you don't want to get it completely flat where the springs distorted 
Uh, you just want to crank it down enough to where you can get it on the, on, the, on the frame. Over to the frame here, we got all these four bolts started, but they're to a point where it'll still move. They're just finger tight. They're not cranked down all the way yet. And you can see on the back here, this isn't lined up yet, so we're going to have to start cranking the spring down until we can get this attached on here. And don't crank it any further past that because then you're going to overstress the spring. Okay, uh, Kyle had to leave. He had to go get his car inspected, but he got this cranked up enough for me. There's a lot of tension in that, so it takes a strong arm to compress it, or it takes a lot of rest brakes for me, so uh, Kyle was a big help. Uh, this has lock pins on it, and I have not turned these over on this side, nor that side. Now, if you do this while the uh, body is on, I suggest that you lock these over on this, and this so uh, they're real hard to get to if the body's on then when you tighten the other side they're thus already uh, locked so anyway you can see the springs on i'm going to leave those two clamps on to hold the uh, spring lease together until we put the differential on and there will be a little adjustment but we put this side on first because with the z-bar uh, that has to adjust Okay, the spring is in. I went ahead and put the nut on the end here, tighten it up real good with an impact hammer. You can see I bent the lock tabs over, so we're good there. I went ahead and put the tubes on. I'm going to roll this over and we'll talk a little bit about where the brake assembly attaches. Okay, I went ahead and put the tubes on and the shackles. I'm missing one little brake clip here, but it's out of the CAD plater. But I put the rest of them on so I'd know where all the parts are. Uh, I'm going to put the drain plug loose in it because I'll have to fill it up with oil eventually. And I don't want to ruin these. I replace these aluminum washers every time I fill something up. So uh, uh, we'll go ahead and put that on. Now the brakes, uh, the only unusual thing about putting these on is I had marked these, and I don't know if you can see in there, but I used a Y up here and I used a couple of punches here, so I knew where this specialty piece went. So let me get back where you can see the whole thing. You can see it's kind of off-centered. Uh, you're, uh, when you put this sucker on like that, uh, it's such like that. Uh, this will run right, the piece of bar that goes over and pulls your emergency brake will run right above the top of the drain hole if you get it wrong. I happen to have a second car, so it's easy for me to look at it and see exactly where that goes, but I marked it for the next guy. And we got the shackles on there for the dampers, so uh, you can see there was lots and lots of bolts on there to put the tubes back on. So uh, anyway, we'll take it over and get it underneath the car now. Okay, I took the spring compressor off and you can see I lifted the differential in there with an engine hoist. A couple of things I want to point out here is I'm getting ready to put my uh, dampers on and I put the bolts in from the outside. They will not come out if you put the bolts in from this side. You can get them in if, uh, you know, the uh, plate isn't on for the brakes and the hubs aren't in for the axles. But uh, also there is a pib right under here and you want to get that so it sets in that pib. And I've got it in the pib there. There's also a pib on the bottom plate. You can see the indent there. And that has to go down here at the bottom and go on that indent. And you can see I'm starting on this side with the Z-bar, and I'm going to get that lined up and make sure the Z-bar is straight, get the plate on the bottom, then we'll talk about a little more. Okay, I went ahead and put the plate on the bottom, and we got the pibs in. Now this side I took note of, and there's two thick washers here that go on each one of these, and this is the right side. Uh, the left side has three of these thick washers. The reason is... The left and the right are different poundage. This one actually measures about a sixteenth of an inch thicker than the one on the other side. And I think it is the last two leaves that they put in are different. The rest of them seem to measure identical. So that's how they get a hundred extra pounds of uh, load on each spring. 
Oh, I uh, went ahead and put these shackles in here. Uh, I talked about the direction of the bolt. These do get a cotter pin with a washer and there's a plate on each side. Uh, I'm going to slip the Z-bar in also up at the top one there and make sure I line up and I'm going to leave everything loose so we can uh, get it all aligned. Okay, uh, I went ahead as you can see, I put this over. Now I line this back up right here. You can see where the U-bolt uh, actually went over it so I took that as the setting to where to start. And you can see the front of the Z-bar here. We're going to go ahead and take and put that on there. There's a specialty nut that goes on the top of there, if I recall. i got to check my parts list. But I'm going to put something on there just to snug it up and hold it right now and uh, just use a regular bolt. But uh, they'll be easy to change because they're from the top and I don't have my body on yet, as you can see. Okay, uh, the next step here is uh, I put the Z-bar on there. You can see the Z-bar. And uh, I got that lined up where uh, basically you can see where the strap went here. These are specially nuts and I couldn't find them. But I did go ahead and tighten that up and I snug these up on the back. The book says to leave them a little bit loose on these. so. The springs compress out, so they always keep them tight. So I've got those just snugged up. They're not quite tight enough. And the next step now is I'm going to tighten these uh, big bolts here on the front of the spring. Uh, those on the washers, just to comment on them, they're one of those beveled washers. They've got the contour on top. Of course, the flat side goes down and the car side goes up. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten those. That'll set that side, then we'll go over and we'll start our measurements and such on the other side to make sure we get it lined up. You know, uh, to support this, and uh, you know, normally when you take a differential out, you'd have both springs already in, but I'm kind of putting it together in one. I went ahead and uh, attached it, took a couple of straps and put it in place. I connected the dampers to it on the bottom with the straps so that uh, we could uh, kind of line it all up to get that Z-bar straight. So I've got the right side pretty good and I'm going to go ahead and put the left side spring on. Okay, I put up some little better lights, but when Kyle mentioned don't overstress it, I've seen uh, some pictures online where people had these springs flattened out. If you can see the curvature there, that's about as far as you need to go with them, so uh, they don't need to be drained out all the way with the uh, spring tool. Okay, I took some of my favorite uh, SIG 3000 grease and I uh, greased all the bolts. That's the back one. Uh, grease this other one here. That there's two that goes in the back with the shackles. Uh, you'll note here, I got this out of a cloud too and somebody thought the solution to the low back end was putting an extra leaf in it. It looks like they had some local uh, spring guy it's even got the little end in or pimp in it. Uh, but it works perfectly because it holds my uh, shaft and my spring tool from moving. So you do need something there. I lubricate that because uh, there's a lot of friction there. And if you don't lubricate it, uh, you have to have a good piece of steel in there. I put this in there to uh, just protect the paint I put on the uh, bottom plate. And you can see this cranking here is so much easier. Uh, you didn't see Kyle doing it under the car, but uh, everything moves on you, and that, that uh, makes it a little bit more difficult. The whole thing, you don't have a steady base. And I put these blocks, and I recommend everybody get a set of blocks in the shop because they come in handy all the time, and a few pieces of 2 by 4 Okay, these are uh, the shackles that go on the back wheels. Uh, I would note that these are both the same, rounded. The one with the Z-bar has a V in it. The other thing to note, there were three washers, uh, two of these thicker flat washers. Then the last one was one of these uh, machined washers. It's got a bevel to it, and of course the bevel goes uh, out towards the nut. 